Hello everyone, thank you so much for coming back to the channel. My name is Jose Prado and a lot of things have been going on all around the world, right? And it depends on where you are around the world. It's what you're experiencing. Everyone pretty much in over 100 countries, everybody is experiencing the coronavirus, right? And because of that, there has been food shortages. There has been massive unemployment. There has been some, you know, some deaths, which are very unfortunate. And other things have also spiral, spiral out of control because of COVID-19, because of the response of the governments that they have done. And things just seem to get from bad to worst. All right. So it depends on where you are is what you're experiencing. Because let's say if you live in Atlanta or in Seattle, you're experiencing social unrest and you've seen the riots. You've seen Chaz become a nation or actually, you know, they changed it to CHOP. Um, they have not gotten rid of that whole ordeal yet. And there might be a clash between Trump supporters and Antifa on the 4th of July. You know, it's, it's something that we might see. And that's, it's going to be something specific for Seattle. So like I said, depending on where you are is what you're going to experience. You know, a lot of people in different parts of the country and even around the world, they're experiencing hunger because of the coronavirus. Or actually the response of the government due to coronavirus. Alright, so all of this, of course, gives you more and more reason why you should always be prepared. Because we don't know what's going to happen, especially if you live in an area. And, you know, in an area that usually doesn't get much action. Because if your area is re relatively normal compared to other places around the world, then you're going to be... Um, complacent and you're gonna say well i don't have to worry about anything because nothing ever happens in my town you know everybody knows everybody and and i don't see the reason why i need to do anything about it now there's other people in the big cities that have seen all this chaos going on you know and some of them are pretty much used to it and they don't see a reason why they should do anything at all either because it's you know it's business as usual for example chicago has always had a very high death rate, high um, criminal rate, and there's people living there, and you know that's just part of everyday living. Just like places all around the world that have warlords, or they have cartels, or they have, you know, something like that. They don't see the the need to leave because they have always lived under those conditions, right? So they don't feel like they need to do anything. Now there's people like us preppers who we we see the potential of something going on and we don't want to sit around and wait for things to get bad to bad in order for us to do something about it right so a lot of things that the coronavirus has teach us is how how things unfold right for for example the pandemic pretty much was pretty pretty slow you know it everybody thought it was going to be something quick there's going to be massive death like we see in the movies you know everybody's laying around martial law, all this and that. But it pretty much turned out to be pretty dragged out. Now, the consequences of it are very, very devastating. Don't get me wrong. Just because it didn't happen fast doesn't mean that it's not going to happen at all, right? The The death rate, a lot of people are saying is still high. Others are saying is, is getting lower. The more immune test, the lower the death rate becomes. So it really doesn't really matter. Uh, because of the coronavirus, the People get infected in food supply or, you know, food processing plants. Those those have closed down, which that made prices increase and the supply decrease um, because of George Floyd and what happened in Atlanta. You know, there's massive protests, riots, buildings burning. And now cops are saying that they're going to walk off the job, which, of course, if that happens, those cities are going to become even more dangerous, Right. If with the number of cops that they had already, it's still a very dangerous place with no cops at all, then, you know, it's going to become very deadly. Now, that's the cities. On on the other hand, on the country setting or, you know, places that are not as populated and don't have high crime rates, those places are going to pretty much stay the same. So that's why I said it depends on where you are is what you're going to experience. All right. But you must get prepared for all of them because... You don't know what's going to be coming your way, you know. Once everything trickles down and everything's placed where it should be, we don't know what it's going to be. 
for example, in my area, we didn't see any riots. There was a, a, a threat of them, you know, two towns over, but I didn't see any. Um, the the shelves at the, at, at the store, they have been low, and sometimes they ha times that I have been there, they didn't have anything for, as far as meat and chicken went, you know, and, and lunch meats and stuff like that. Um, they didn't have anything. The, the fruits and vegetables, they were doing okay, you know, normal. So people still see things in the gro in the grocery store that that they're used to seeing, you know, this is the meats, okay, whatever, we just wait for them to come back and and you know get restocked. But what they don't understand is that the food prices are also going up because we have a very um, big problem coming our way. Now, also another thing that's been going on is it's the debt. We have a lot of a lot of debt. You know, we hit twenty six trillion dollars. Um, if I do a quick search here, let's see how much it has increased in the past few days. Um, so just in the past, let's say a week, maybe if that, it has increased over $150 billion. So just out of that, we, you know. It's just an insane amount of money that it's just going to keep increasing and increasing. And that's going to create hyperinflation. And then we're going to look like Venezuela. We're going to be paying $400,000 for a 12-pack of eggs. And, of course, you know, that's something that people don't fathom. They, they don't understand it. They, they can't comprehend it because it has never, ever happened. And since the United States is the most powerful, most economic stronghold, they don't see that happening one day, right? But my position is, if it, if we see that it's coming, it's better to prepare now and have everything set up to where once it does come, then we're going to be in a much better place, right? For example, with, with the current, excuse me, with the, with the debt, let's say there's hyperinflation, we know that gold and silver are going to be the safe havens or, you know, uh, the currency that you want to have when all this blows up because then you're going to have more port purchasing power because the dollar would have crashed, right? Um, you could already have food stocked up so you wouldn't have to worry too much about that. You would have the skills needed in order for you to be able to grow a farm, grow vegetables and stuff, and be able to eat out of it. You know, there's a lot of things that you, get, you can get prepared. And that that knowledge can be passed down from one generation to the next and it could be a generation of preppers you know not just you or your family now but your 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 daughters and and sons they're gonna carry that knowledge and carry it to the next generation until something very catastrophic happens but then there will be the few that will survive right but anyways i said all that to say that we must get ready because we see we see the country as a whole you know, going to a certain direction. We have threat of war now, as I explained in the previous video. We have the the um, the threat of having hyperinflation and the dollar collapsing. We have the threat, a very big threat, of uh, civil war. And that, you know, that would be something that would be more catastrophic than the first one because technology is a lot better now. You know, we can shoot each other a lot faster and for further, further away than they were able to in the first civil war, right? The government is is divided, you know, because of Trump, Democrats, Republicans, you know, the, the army is not really paying attention to Trump. So all of that, it's a combination of very bad things that are going on all at once within the United States. So even if something specific doesn't happen in your area, a dollar collapse would you will feel it very quickly, you know, uh, a war, you will feel it very quickly. So that's why you must prepare, even if your area is not impacted by anything. All right. Because my area has not other than food prices and, um, you know, some items lacking at the, at the shelves. Other than that, everything's good in my area. But I still pay attention. You know, I bring you the news and everything that I see. And once something gets really, really bad to where it comes to my area, I will be prepared and my family will be prepared. My friends will be prepared. For example, I've been, you know, a, f a few weeks back, 
I put out the the four levels of a crisis, right? And and I and I said, as far as the Memon Survival family is concerned, right now we're on red, and red says that you you and your family have your you're in your bug in bug out location with your self sustained systems running, right? And twenty four hour perimeter check. Now, when the when the threat of the of the riots came around, I mean, I didn't have to scramble around and see what I needed in order to defend my property. I mean, I was already doing that, even though my neighbors aren't, right? I was ready. And and like the video that I posted in the past, uh, my my client was not ready. So he had to scramble, get his stuff ready, and then, you know, there you go. The rest is history. But as far as I went, my family, we didn't have to worry about doing that because we were already ready and we were already looking out. Right. So if something did come in our area, it would be something that we already know how to take care of. We had to how to handle it in the more likely scenarios that would play out in front of us. So all of that takes preparation. All that takes a lot of time for you to go into details on how things work. So that that that's that's what that's the that's the message I want to get across. OK, because a lot of people most of the time do get the information they know what's going on, but they don't do anything about it, right? I, I, very few people have a channel like mine that tell you what you should do. You know, don't just have the knowledge in your head. You need to go ahead and get ready, right? Because if you know that, that a nuke is coming your way, you're not just going to sit there and say, oh, well, you know, I knew this day was coming. And then, boom, you know, you blow up. You will get out of the way. You will know exactly what to do. You know where exactly where to go. You know, that's 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 the point. That's the, the message here. That's what I'm trying to do, right? So I wanted to get this message out because, you know, it was just something that I was thinking about and I've been thinking about for a while now. So the the next show, the next episode that I'm going to do, we're going to get into the economy and to the food crisis that we're experiencing, not just in the country, but worldwide. All right. And how long will it be before we actually start seeing it and feeling it? Well, we're already doing that. But the fact that we are eating yesterday's harvest or last year's harvest, um, that's why a lot of people are not very concerned about it yet. Right. So, again, uh, my name is Jose Prado. And remember, always ready.